What's up, guys? Back in the saddle again with Brett and Hunter. Real rendezvous. We back. Woo! We back. Woo! What up, Brett? Not a whole lot. <laughs> it never is. Yeah. I mean, there's actually been stuff going on, just whenever, not podcasting. <laughs> yeah. Whenever we're, whenever we're not doing this, I actually just, I just, uh, I sleep in a hole in the ground until it's time to, until we're both free. Damn. Yeah, me yeah. too, actually. Yeah. We've both been buried beneath our surface for a little while. Uh, yeah, so. I, I only exist for the podcast. I'm a figment <laughs> of your imagination. He's an apparition I uh, conjure up every so often to record a podcast. I unearth him. <laughs> you have to summon me. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, yeah, so uh, I know we've been absent for a little while. Um, not as long as what we were. <laughs> thought it was no every every Felt single like time <laughs> yeah we talk I, I talk about it all the time with you and uh with you and kaylee every time we're not recording like if we don't record an episode like a week after <laughs> the last one goes up i feel like it's been i feel like we've been gone for for ages but no it's only been a couple months few months yeah and you know that's just uh based on life in general we've been busy you know the holidays and shit like that and yeah. uh I don't know about your household, but mine has gone through a torrential sick spell. Mm-hmm. Tatum Tatum has just been sick off and on yeah. since October, basically, and Alyssa's been pretty sick. And then last time we planned to record, I got really sick. Mm-hmm. So, you know, shit's just been going to hell, but we're back. We're good to go now. We're healthy. Tatum, the future heir yeah. of the real rendezvous legacy. <laughs> our, our future queen, Princess Tatum of, of rendezvous clan. Of, ron- of House Rendezvous. <laughs> We're not Game of Thrones fans, but uh, I had to say that. Um, so anyways, uh, in honor of an upcoming horror film, well, not upcoming, it actually came out two days ago, but uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Scream 6 is out. Brett's seen it. Yes, I, I have. I saw it uh, pre-opening night. I have not seen it. Our local our local uh, movie theater, Tiger Valley Cinemas, shout out Tiger Valley. Uh, they uh they do this neat little thing where the day before a movie's actual release date they do a seven o'clock and a nine o'clock and so me and Kaylee hit that seven o'clock pre-show and I can't talk about any of it. <laughs> yeah, me and Alyssa had intentions of trying to see it this weekend and it kind of fell through, but uh, we strive forward. We'll get to we'll get to it eventually, but we're not reviewing that movie. Today, no, no, obviously. not that one. No. Obviously, how funny would that be? <laughs> a very one sided review. I would be like, you know, based on the trailers, ten out of ten looks great. Everything Brett said here today, I know? concur with Brett. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a seven. We're we're gonna backpedal just a tad, and we're going to review 2022's Scream. I think we didn't actually come to the conclusion of what we were going to refer to it as on this podcast. No, we did not. I'm just going to call it Scream Five. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, f- for the sake of uh, for the sake of simplicity, we're going to call it Scream Five. But let it be known that these bastards pulled a Halloween on us. Yeah, yeah. And they just called it Scream. That's just lazy to me. Like I think like, that's... I I get it. I get why they did it, but it's just kind of annoying. And it, it's extra annoying because they marketed it as Scream Five at the end of every trailer for this movie. The, the, v the V and the M turned red, and it was like, you know, this is Scream 5, but it's just called Scream. And that's the same issue with Scream 6. Yeah. Because now this one's a lot muddier, right? Because you can go on Paramount Plus and, and stuff, and you can see that the movie is just called Scream. But for Scream 6, it, it's the same thing, right? Where yeah. it's, And I, I made a tweet about it. The V is also the V Yeah, the I. V becomes 6, but in the, you know, the trailer and... They do a little thing before the movie where uh, the actress who plays Sam and Courtney Cox are like, hey, thanks for coming to see the movie on the big screen. I don't know why they did that, but that plays before the movie. And then in all the trailers, when it says it, it just says Scream, yeah. right? So I think they might have just called it Scream again. I made oh, a tweet man. about it. It's hard to tell. What if right? it comes out on Paramount and it's just, it's, there it's, are three Screams. It's Scream 2023. I, I genuinely think they might have just called it Scream again. That's a big oof. Uh, which is me. hilarious and stupid. <laughs> so uh, aside from the uh, discombobulated titling issue we have there, um, in general, you would say you enjoyed the movie though, right? Oh, it's fantastic. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's good. That's good news. And I was talking to Brett, you know, me not seeing the movie, obviously, so subject to change, but I'm pretty confident that this statement will still hold true. You know, whenever you power rank all the big slashers, the horror movie franchises that just have several, several, several sequels made, 
uh, the level of quality that all the Scream sequels have is second to none, in my opinion. Uh, I wouldn't call any of the movies partic- particularly bad. No. Whereas, you know, with Friday the 13th, mm-hmm. uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, Halloween, all of those, the big franchises, they may have two mm-hmm. that you would call good yeah. out of like a dozen <laughs> yeah. fucking movies. So um, that that's a big reason why I, I just like all the Scream movies. Mm-hmm. That and whenever we reviewed the, ori- the original Scream last year, um, I talked hardcore about the nostalgia factor, yeah. which still reigns true, mm-hmm. um, even with this movie that came out last year, uh, which we will be reviewing, 2022's yeah. Scream. Um, this was directed by Matt Bettinelli, Open, and Tyler Gillett. And uh, have we talked about how they did uh, Ready or Not? Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's, 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 a, it's a pretty cool movie. Honestly, uh I would like to see what else they could do with something else other than just the Scream. I mm-hmm. hope they don't get lassoed into the Scream yeah. franchise. Mm-hmm. Um, Scream 7 did get greenlit. It, of course it did. <laughs> yeah. Look at how much money this movie made last yeah. year. I bet Scream 6 is going to rake in the dough. Oh, yeah. This, this uh, uh, The Scream movie we'll be reviewing was mm-hmm. a January release. Was it yeah. really? Yeah, January 14th, 2022. Wow, January movies are ass. This past January had a good slate. It did. Megan, which I didn't see, but I saw got... You know, pretty decent reviews. It was fine. Uh, you, so you you wouldn't watch it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I saw it in theaters. It was fine. PG being PG thirteen really held it back. I got you. Uh, which they did release an R rated cut of it because it was originally meant to be when yeah. they filmed it. They yeah. filmed an R rated. movie. So there's an R rated director's cut then. Yeah, which I haven't watched yet, but I I I, I want to get around to it. I, I would like to see the R rated version because I do think it would elevate it. There are at least like two other movies that came out this past January that are totally escaping my brain currently. But I know they were good movies. Like, got, like, it was surprising how many good movies came out this past January. I feel like you're right. Here, give me a second. <laughs> I'll, I'll, our little magic box will tell us. Yeah, yeah, the Google machine. Um, I'll try and ramble just a second here while you look into all that. Uh, we're not going to dive directly into Scream just yet. We're going to get back in the saddle like we usually do and uh, blabber like for 40 minutes about other nerd shit like we always do pool yes uh, that was uh it probably didn't make a ton of money but it's one of those like elevated horror Mm. movies like your hereditaries and shit like that knock at the cabin was pretty good okay that's i I did i did enjoy knock at the cabin a lot january though i think it was a february release it might have been this might be lying to me come to think of it i think infinity pool was february i think i think i might be being lied to backpedal just slightly what else you got on there i know there were other ones um, Give me the other titles. Most of these are things I've never heard of. Well, uh, <laughs> I guess it's really not that important. Uh, when did... was No, that was last year. I have no idea. Eh, it'll be all right. Just believe me, guys. <laughs> Grasshoppers. I never saw that. <laughs> never heard of that. The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. It sounds like a cool movie. 5,000 Blankets. Nope. Megan. A Man Called Otto, I heard, was pretty good. Actually, when I saw Megan, when we left the theater after seeing Megan, a guy uh, complimented the shirt I was wearing and then asked me what I saw. And I said, Megan, I said, what did you see? He said he saw a man called Otto. Uh, Fuck, I can't talk. (laughs) He said he saw a man called Otto. And it was a really funny exchange because... (laughs) He was like, oh, what's Megan about? And I was like, oh, this little girl boss doll that kills a bunch of people. And I was like, what's a man called Otto about? And he was like, oh, Tom Hanks is suicidal. <laughs> and I was like, hmm, <laughs> yeah. interesting. I I, uh, I remember when the, the trailers first released for Man Called Otto, I thought it looked ass, <laughs> to, for lack of better words. Um, None of these are things. I think you might have just been wrong. Oh. Plane came out. I don't know if you saw Plane and thought that no, was good. No, but that's another one that wasn't as bad as everybody thought it was going to oh, be. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that was one of the ones that I was discussing. Plane and, uh, yeah, Megan. Those and are it, all the big ones. Anyway, Skidmore Rink, that one, I haven't seen that one, but a lot of people love that one. Anyways, let's let's just yeah, okay. let's just enough move with, on. <laughs> enough with all the movies that released in January of 2023. That was a totally unnecessary rabbit hole. <laughs> Oh, well, we'll That's what it's out. all about. Yeah, yeah, we're, look at us. We're great. Um, anyways, uh, what, what, what is the next thing that we were going to discuss here before we get into our Scream 2022 review? Well, 
I did want to. I did want to say a few a few uh, words about the show itself. Yeah, that's, this, what, that's what we need to about get this into. little baby that we have here. Not to be confused with your actual baby. Um, <laughs> let it all be known to the world that this is his first child. <laughs> that's correct. Um, but no, so uh, it has been. Well, it's been past the year anniversary, but the one year anniversary of this show uh, was January nineteenth. Uh, that's a cool thing that released in January. Yeah, there you go. Look at that. That's a good January release. Um, but no, it, it's really hard to think that we've been doing this for a whole year because it does not feel like that whatsoever. No, not at all. Uh, but with 19 episodes under our belt for that year, we're, we're going to consider that season one. Uh, we talked about this before, but we've never said it uh, out loud here on the show. But uh, basically what the seasons are going to be is just however many episodes we can get out in one year. Yeah. In a 365-day period, however many episodes come out, that is a season. <laughs> uh, so, season one is done and gone. Bury it. Forget about it. We are here, fresh, with season two, episode one. Uh, and it's cool. It's really cool. I uh, Thank you guys for allowing us to be able to do this for a whole year. Yeah, everybody um, that's given us a chance yeah. and just kind of you know listened and... Uh, the few people that have actually followed up and listened mm-hmm. to the second episode, yeah. third episodes, we appreciate you. Yeah, absolutely unreal. We are up to 157 subscribers on YouTube, which I think for a year, with, with a channel that started just from scratch, from nothing, right? 150 of anything in one year is fucking mind blowing. In my opinion, especially being a, a podcast yeah. uploaded on YouTube, yeah, because I would never. That would never be my primary way to listen to a podcast. No, which is hilarious YouTube. because YouTube is is our number one source of listeners. Right. Yeah. You, you check the Buzzsprout and those numbers are like you would you'd think <laughs> one person was listening on three different devices if you check the Buzzsprout, but you look at the YouTube and that's, that's where crazy. That algorithm, man. That YouTube algorithm. I think that's the the main problem with the with the um, streaming service. I think I might have said this before, but it's like with those, with like with Spotify and stuff, people have to like actively look us up. Like, yeah. Spotify is not going to say, "Hey, here's this thing you might like." Spot- whereas YouTube is like pushing us hard. I don't listen to my podcast on Spotify. I listen on Apple Music, and it doesn't suggest any new uh, material at all. I have to search everything I'm yeah, trying to so find. So that's, that, that's the biggest problem with that. Yeah, and, and Spotify is not much better. Uh, I know it's better with music, mm-hmm. but as far as podcasts, yeah. I think it does the same shit. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah. With all that being said, uh, it's awesome to still be doing this after a year, and it's awesome to uh, have so many people that have supported us uh, throughout that year. So, thank you guys so much. Yeah, thank you very much. Awesome. Hmm. Now we're gonna bullshit about some other stuff that happened <laughs> while we've been gone. <laughs> what do we got first? Um, we can talk about The Last of Us. Oh yes. So The Last of Us. Uh, great show. That's all I need to say about that. <laughs> right off the bat. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was looking at things. Um, no, Last of Us is phenomenal. Um, have you? You haven't played the game, have you? Nope. No. I um. Well, I did, and it's great. The Last of Us game is is might be you know, and this is super overplayed to the point of exhaustion but the last of us is probably one of the greatest games of all time just in terms of story like gameplay super basic it's it's a third person action game made by naughty dog (laughs) you know what you're playing i feel like like anytime you google best games ever yeah it's one of the ones that pop up yeah super far up that list and and for good reason you know this story is i think it was always meant to be you know adapted into live action i got especially as a tv show well, they brought on, uh, what's his name? Neil Druckmann, I think is, is yeah. the guy's name. Yeah. that worked for Naughty Dog mm-hmm. and wrote the, the story yeah. for the game. Yeah, so. and directed the game. Right. Yeah, So and it, and it is super faithful, And then, but there are, the changes that are there are, are you know, good ones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no. So, no, The Last of Us is, is definitely something special. I think it's going to go down in history as maybe one of, if not the best video game adaptations of anything. I think it really is given... Uh, uh, a leg up um also in the fact that you know they try so often to make a video game adaptation in a film mm-hmm. and right there you're shooting yourself in the foot yeah, because I think, I think all video game adaptations should need to probably be like a mini be tv shows or yeah. mini series yeah yeah because like you know you're dumping i mean what's the average hour like, like eight to ten hours right? worth of story and gameplay into a two-hour movie it's just difficult yeah you're always going to have the people that are disappointed because mm-hmm. certain aspects yeah. of the game was left out and, and it can be done, but like I, I do believe that it's very difficult. Yeah, TV shows, miniseries, best way to go. And The Last of Us again, 
proves that really well. And I think the pacing of the show is is like probably some of the best pacing I've ever seen in anything because at the end of every episode, as someone who's played the game, I know exactly what the next episode is going to be from start to finish. Yeah. Like they chunked out the story into these nine episodes so perfectly. Me, me coming from... Without really missing anything. Me coming from the perspective of somebody that never played the games, mm -hmm. I think that that is also the best aspect of the TV <laughs> yeah. show is the pacing. Um, the pilot episode, the first episode, was an hour and a half in length. Uh, maybe maybe longer than an hour and a half, mm -hmm. I, I believe. It was almost two hours. Yeah. It yeah. was basically a movie. It, it, it was insane, and mm -hmm. it did not feel no. it did not feel that no. way whatsoever. Uh, it had me on the edge of my seat the mm -hmm. whole time. Also, uh, uh, the third episode with, um, what's the character's name? Nick Offerman. Bill and Frank. Bill and Frank. Mm -hmm. uh, that, episode that episode was amazing. That episode destroyed me, dude. You yeah. can ask Dad. I was the act, sobbing. The acting was uh, top-notch oh. in that episode. And that's another thing that I have to address is, you know, Pedro Pascal can do no wrong right mm -hmm. now. No, but dude is on a hot streak. Not, not just him, though. I haven't seen a bad stitch of acting in the entire series yet. No. Um, Bella Ramsey is a standout. Yeah, she's now, really I never good. Watched, man. You mentioned Game of Thrones earlier. I've never seen any games Me of Thrones. <laughs> oh yeah, you did say that. Yeah, uh, and I never will. That's not something I'm ever going to start. But she's in that, and Dad was saying that he was really excited because I've been watching it with my dad, who's never played the games, and he also loves the show. So pa another Pedro Pascal, I think, was in Game of, uh, Thrones, Game of Thrones also. also yeah, like for a brief period. Yeah. But um, the no dude, Bella Ramsey is phenomenal as Ellie. I would honestly say. Not to slander my boy, because he's doing an amazing job, too. But I think Bella Ramsey as Ellie might be better than uh, Pedro Pascal as Joel. Really? Right? Which which is easy to say, because the show definitely has uh, more of a focus on her than it does Joel. Which is a nice uh, contrast, because you play as Joel right. for the entire game. Right. So it is nice to spend more time with Ellie. But the way Bella Ramsey is playing her is just, like, it's so, so faithful to the games while also, like making it her own thing and she's just doing such a good job i need your opinion on um the fact that now this is one thing that if i had played the game maybe i would be slightly disappointed in coming into the tv series because i feel like it's a pretty heavily action oriented game is that true or no not really because, because I, they're the, the tv series which this is a good thing yeah but the tv series doesn't have a ton of no they action. infected with the yeah. action yeah and that's a big complaint I'm seeing on Twitter from, you know, people who haven't played the games. They're like, oh, this is a zombie show. Where's all the zombies? The Last of Us is a stealth game. I got basically. you. Basically. I got you. You sneak around most of the zombies. Are you, like, counting your bullets and, and stuff? Yes, exactly. Oof. Exactly. You're counting your bullets because if you run out, you know, yeah. who knows when you're going to be able to scavenge more of them. So, you, you most of the time, you're stealthing around the zombies. And while I will say, objectively, yes, there is more zombie encounters in the game. That's because it's a video game, right? And it needs to be fun to play, as well as you know, experiencing the story. You know, I, I would say that yes, there is some times that I wish there was a little bit more action. Not even if it was you know infected driven, mm -hmm. just in general. Yeah. But it's still, regardless of that, I've never finished an episode and been like, man, that that, that one kind of sucked. Yeah. No, I, I haven't I, been upset with any of them. No, and, and it's not even something I really notice, right? Because The Last of Us. Both the game and the show, first and foremost, is a character drama. Yeah, it it it's a it is. That's why it's great in both aspects. Exactly. That's right? why any great sense of media is great. Yeah. Whenever it's character driven. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It is above all else a character drama. You take the zombies out, you know, and you keep the characters and and their struggles and what they're going through. You know, that's what matters. The title, The Last of Us. The us is what's left of humanity, yeah. not. Not, not these these zombies and these infected. So it's not something that bothers me really at all. Yeah. You know, I think what we have gotten of the infected has been, you know, perfectly enough. What what do you think of the uh cordyceps design and everything? Um I think the mouth tendrils are dumb. I yeah. think getting rid of the spores was dumb. Okay. But it's not something that's like it it doesn't make the show bad. It's just a change that it's like, well, I don't know. Like it doesn't add or take away. So it's like, well, if it's not adding anything, why do it? But if it's not taking away anything, I don't really care that See, much. See, that, that's something from the outside looking in I really like. I think it's super creepy mm. the way that it's transmitted. And I think that their design is so gross. I was outside mm. today taking some cardboard up on my burn mm -hmm. pile. And some of the cardboard that was already on the burn pile had blown down the hill. Oh, and yeah. And it was near some like old rotten trees. 
and there was like fungus growing on them. Ooh. And I was like, I don't want to touch these. <laughs> yeah. I might just kick some leaves yeah. on them. Well, their design is, is perfectly faithful to the game. Like the clickers, the bloater, mm-hmm. um, they all look great. The bloater actually, I don't know if you knew this, that is that was a suit. The bloater was practical. Oh, really? Yeah. It looks CGI. Yeah, well, they, they probably touched it like up with CGI, kind of like yeah. Marvel does with the Spider-Man suits. Yeah, but, I got you. you know, on set, that was a physical, full-body suit that that guy was wearing. That's awesome. That's another thing I like about it is there's a lot of, uh, you know, practical mm-hmm. effects to the uh, the uh, clickers and yeah. stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I haven't seen the last, last week's episode... And then uh, tonight when we're recording, mm-hmm. actually... The, is the finale, the which season. I'll probably watch tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. I, well, Which I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm not going to say anything about it, because I know and you don't. But I'm so excited to see... I'm excited to see people who don't know about the game's reaction to the finale. I th- I, I know how the original game kind of ends. Mm-hmm. I, I kind of spoiled that for myself uh, a long time mm-hmm. ago. But, uh, you know, I've never like watched it I or gotcha. anything. Yeah. So... I'm interested in that, obviously. Uh, I'm kind of bummed just now realizing that we're recording this as late as we are, and Alyssa's probably already in bed, and she's going to wake up early, so we're not going to get to watch it together. Uh, uh, has, has she been watching it with you? Yes, she's oh, watched cool. every episode. Well, that, yeah, that's a bummer. I'm So I can't just watch them yeah. without her. So I'm going to yeah. like wait till the next day off. Damn. Ooh. That's like two weeks from now. Ooh. Ugh. Well, anyways, let's move, let's move on from <laughs> now that bummer. Now we're sad now. Uh, What's next on the agenda? Next up, we've got uh, that Flash trailer that premiered at the Super Bowl. Oh, yes. Exciting news. What do you think of it? You're the big Flash guy. Uh, I think it looks fine. Fine. It's I, uh, fine. <laughs> at least he didn't say mid. It's no, fine. Um, no, I, I, I think the movie's going to be great. You know, obviously, despite uh, everything that has happened regarding Ezra Miller, I do still think the movie's going to be a banger. Yeah. Yeah, um, I agree. I agree. It looks like it's got a lot of uh, really interesting... Uh, yeah. Not subplots, but... Uh, little little things here and there. It's like basically it. Flashpoint, but not really. And there's like three Batman or something. Yeah. So I'm pretty excited. Ben Affleck's got a gray and blue suit, which is cool. It's yeah. cool to, that they're doing the gray and the blue in live action. Yeah. Michael Keaton looks cool. You know, he's Michael Keaton. He's going to show up. I'm super excited for Michael Keaton. He's going to show up. He's going to say eight lines that he said in the original. Everyone will clap. It'll be great. Okay. Once again, I'm a sucker for nostalgia, and I was just telling Brett before we hit record that I just I love '89 Batman. I I, I also love Batman '89. Uh, we have it on DVD, and I remember when I was younger, like eight or nine. <laughs> Funny, I'd uh, ah. <laughs> I'd, uh, I'd I'd watch it constantly, just on repeat. So I I do love I do love Michael Keaton Batman. I think his new suit's a little. It's like too smooth. Yeah, <laughs> it's like well, well, weird complaint, but well, I, I think they should have just kept his old suit. His old suit kind of sucks, though. If we're being honest, too. I don't, I don't know. No, I, I I actually really like the eighty nine really? suit. The only thing I like about it is as uh, resident suit guy. Yeah, well, I mean, Red that, stamp that, of approval. On that's the a lot coming suit. from you. Uh, but the the biggest thing I like about it is the bright yellow mm-hmm. bat symbol on yeah. the chest. Um, in Batman Returns, at the end of the movie, he takes his mask off, mm-hmm. but it's all latex. Yeah. It's all one mold. Mm-hmm. So when he takes the mask off, he literally he rips, rips it. it off. Yeah, yeah, and it looks like shit. But I, I like uh, I like the the cowl is probably my favorite part of the '89 suit because I like how like kind of angular it is. It's got yeah. a lot of straight lines on it. I feel, like it's, I feel it. like it's furrowed. Like he looks grumpy. Yeah, like. yeah. And I also love how the cape, which is something like even you know the Batman hasn't really shown or done yet i love when batman's cape when it's closed is like a full body cloak over the shoulders yeah yeah. i love i love that keaton's cape literally just comes straight out of the symbol down and like he can close it and yeah like sort of like a dracula thing it's not it's not just a cape it's a cow yeah exactly yeah which i which i love yeah go to shout out batman animated series go to to episode the cape and the cow Mm -hmm. um yeah i i'm excited for michael keaton uh and I'm also just really excited for more DC. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't see Black Adam, and I know you liked it. I did. I, I, it was enjoyable. And uh, I don't have any reason why I hadn't seen it. I, I should watch it. I just uh, I'm I'm pumped up about DC. Mm-hmm. I, I think Ezra Miller is cool as Flash. Uh, it's kind of a bummer that everything happened to where uh, he's not going to be involved anymore. Mm-hmm. But um, it is what it is. Yeah. And I'm also excited about where dc is headed mm-hmm. with you know james gunn 
And uh, I guess that kind of segues yeah, into our next perfectly, thing. Perfectly, actually. <laughs> but I, I think our. But, but real quick, I, I do think the trailer looks really looked really good. Yeah, yeah. And I, I do want to say I have a lot of faith in that director, Andy Muschietti. Mm-hmm. I thought uh, it 2017 mm-hmm. uh, was the best movie I saw that year. Yeah. And it's one of my favorite horror movies. It's probably in my top ten favorite horror mm-hmm. movies ever. And uh, I, I got a lot of faith in him. I think he'll do really good. Yeah. And uh, I'm I'm excited to see what they do. The whole like Zod and Supergirl thing, I mm-hmm. think, is going to be interesting to see. That's another thing I love is Michael Shannon mm-hmm. as Zod. I think Michael Shannon is one of the best actors mm-hmm. at playing a douche. Yeah, like just being <laughs> an evil person. Yeah, I think he's good. Uh, I guess my biggest worry for the Flash movie is that from everything we've seen, and even like the merchandising, they're definitely pushing Keaton more than they're pushing the Flash. Yeah, <laughs> and now so we've got. Michael Keaton. Which kind of sucks. And the Supergirl Zod stuff. I'm just wondering exactly how much of the Flash movie is actually going to be focused on the Flash. I think this actress playing as Supergirl looks hard as fuck. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She looks like a badass. Yeah, super excited. for. I think her name is Sasha Callie. Yeah, like she hasn't been in a whole lot, has she? No, I I, I don't recognize her from anything. Yeah, I I like her. I think she looks great. She looks tough. But I do agree with what you're saying. Mm Mm-hmm kind of we should proceed yeah. with caution there. yeah and like all the merchandising and and like t-shirts and stuff like they, they released a poster they released a poster an official poster for the movie that said batman twice in huge letters with ben affleck symbol and keaton symbol and then the very bottom of it said the flash <laughs> it's like <laughs> Hmm. I, I, it's you know you're kind of showing is you're kind of showing where your priorities lie here, DC. What do you uh, what do you got going on there? I think some of that, as I already said thirty seconds ago, can segue into what we want to talk about yeah. next. Maybe they're trying to compensate for the fact that this upcoming DC slate that was announced. Mm-hmm. Maybe the flaw in there is it doesn't have as many of the big names involved. Yeah. Uh, talk about the new DC slate a little bit. So. Um, James Gunn, as we all know, is now head of uh, DC Studios. Shout out James Gunn. Shout out James Gunn. And uh, is in charge of, of, you know, rebranding and rebooting this uh, cinematic universe. They've tried and failed so spectacularly (laughs) to get off the ground. And and they released the slate. He released the first, I think it's like six of them. I think we got like six projects coming out. What is? Did it say what the time span is that this will cover? No, no, we don't have like, dates for anything. Okay, I'll, okay. Um, we do not have dates for anything. We just have names. Yeah. Basically, so uh, going over that slate real quick, we've got Superman Legacy written and just uh, the other day confirmed to also be being directed by James Gunn. Okay. So they're they're first, and this is confirmed to be the first one to come out. So Superman Legacy title of the movie. It's going to be focusing on. Superman's younger days, sort of like a year one type thing, written and directed by James Gunn. Pretty excited. You know, James Gunn has done no wrong. He's gone, everyone on Twitter, when it was announced that he was directing, of course, there was a bit of like, oh, he's going to make Superman stupid. He's going to make him say dumb jokes, right? It's like, this man has gone. cast like Dave Bautista. (laughs) It's like high school Superman. (laughs) This man has gone six for six with superhero films. I I trust him with Superman. Yeah, I I do too. Um, I really had no faith whatsoever in Peacemaker. I had no interest in it. Mm-hmm. We talked about and this it before was it was released. I watched it and enjoyed mm-hmm. the fuck out of yeah. it. Yeah. So you're right on that. Yeah. And then we've got Batman, the Brave and the Bold. Well, it's actually just called the Brave and the Bold. So the title does not include the word Batman, which I think is a misstep. I hope they change that. <laughs> I feel like they will. I They'll ho- have to, I right? Hope like, they, I hope they change it to like Batman. You can, you can draw colon, so the many, Brave and the Bold. You can draw so many more people in with, yeah, with that word his name Batman. In the title. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm pretty excited about this one because it is, for the first time since Batman and Robin, it is a movie about Batman and Robin. We're going to have Damian Wayne, right? Yes. I'm excited about that. I know in the past, I don't know if we've talked about it on the pod, mm-hmm. you're not a huge, not big on the Damian Wayne Not a train. huge Damian I, guy. I, I enjoy Damian. I, enjoy, I think he is the coolest looking Robin. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he looks a lot, his aesthetic is similar-ish to... Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, we've talked before about how much I love like the early 2000s mm-hmm. Teen Titans animated series. And uh, I think he looks like that Robin. Yeah. Son. Uh, that Robin is Dick Grayson. Mm-hmm. But regardless, I digress. Uh, I really love uh, what is the animated movie with the Batman, Son of Batman, mm-hmm. uh, with Damian Wayne. Yeah. It's, it's really cool. It kind of dives into Damian Wayne's uh, really weird upbringing mm-hmm. with the uh, League of Assassins. Yes. 
and uh, you know it's Robin with a katana, mm-hmm. so that's dope. Yeah, um, I'm looking forward to it. I know I'm I'm excited. I know, I, I know you are too. I didn't yeah. mean to say you were, <laughs> but I just I just really am glad to see mm-hmm. uh, Braddy Snot Nose, yeah. Damian Wayne. D- despite my distaste for uh, Damian Wayne as a character, I also do think it's kind of weird to start with him. Mm-hmm. I think it might I be I think it might be a bit jarring for general audiences who, you know, when they were younger may have watched Teen Titans and they're right. like, "Oh, Dick Grayson, that's Robin." And it's always it's been like, Dick Grayson. Yeah, right. and then it's like, "Here's this guy, but it's it's a different Robin that you probably haven't heard of." Yeah. Um, but then again, as we'll see, the whole slate is kind of jarring to general audiences. Yes. James Gunn is definitely going whole hog into, you know, just for people who already are fans of DC. Like, I don't think they're, he's really trying to appeal to general audiences. But I, I, I'm excited to see Robin back on the big screen. I think that's some of James Gunn's appeal, though. Mm-hmm. Just to play devil's advocate yeah. here for a second. Like, basically everything he's ever put out has been mm-hmm. obscure. Yeah. Or something kind of, you know, not everybody mm-hmm. is interested in. Yeah. And it's always succeeded. So, as we said, a lot of faith in James mm-hmm. Gunn. No, no, I, I have complete faith in him. I think they're going to be good movies. And, and I'll, I'll go see all of them. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. But, um, but yeah, so that's Superman Legacy, Brave and the Bold. And then here we start getting into uh, <laughs> uh, sort of the deep cuts. We've got The Authority. Right. Right. And I am not going to sit here and pretend that I know shit about The Authority. I, you know when I found out about The Authority? When they announced when The they, Authority. Exactly. <laughs> that is the first time I'd ever heard of them. But from the research that I did do, uh, The Authority is basically if every member of the Justice League was either Batman or Punisher, right? So they are a group of vigilantes, uh, some of them super-powered, uh, who are, are cool with murder. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the two headlining members of the Authority being, I believe his name is the Midnighter, and he just is Batman. The Midnighter. He's like if Batman and Punisher had a baby. Man, that don't roll off the tongue very well. And then Apollo. Like who that. is like Superman if he went way hard into the sun branding, right? Uh, and that's all I know about the Authority. I know that they're they're no nonsense. They're vigilantes and they're a team. Uh, but I'm still excited for the movie because if anyone knows James Gunn's bread and butter, it's taking no no name teams that no one's heard of or cares about and turning them into very compelling, very good movies. Yes, he did it with Guardians. He did it with the Suicide Squad, and I have no reason to believe that he won't do it again with the Authority. Yeah, I'm going to tell you right now, whenever Guardians of the Galaxy for, was first announced back in, I think it came out in 2014, so announced yeah. in 2013, mm-hmm. when that first trailer came out for Guardians of the Galaxy, nobody knew no. what the hell that no, was. No, me and I remember me nobody and Dad. Nobody knew. I, did, I, I, I had no idea. Yeah, I remember me and Dad, we were like, who are the Guardians of the Galaxy? Yeah, and and... You know, it's funny now looking back, like that first trailer, I still like it still resonates mm-hmm. with me, like the the, the song. And that, that first movie is still phenomenal. It, One it, of Marvel's it's, it's best. It's my top three favorite of the MCU. Yeah. For sure. It might be my favorite. It might be my favorite of the, the MCU. Well, my honest. extreme bias, No Way Home is my favorite MCU movie. But <laughs> No Way Home's good. <laughs> no Way Home's but definitely good. Guardians of the Galaxy is way up there. First Ant Man too. I like the first Ant Man yes, a lot. Very underrated. Yeah. In my super opinion. underrated. Um but yeah, uh, I, I think the authority sounds cool, man. Yeah. I like a team up movie. Mm-hmm. I mean, we all do. No, we all know? we all have a good team film. DC so the, obviously does. They're trying yeah. to throw as many people in <laughs> yeah. this fucking Flash movie as they can. Oh, like, yeah. Get them in there. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, this Flash movie is going to be to the Flash what Captain America: Civil War was to Captain America. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like, like everyone's movie but his. Yeah, it's like hey, hey. Uh, cap we give you we give you another movie buddy <laughs> yeah and it's like he's, he's, <laughs> we just, you just got to bring a few friends along <laughs> yeah he's like maybe a third of the movie that should have just been called an avengers movie <laughs> yeah yeah it should have <laughs> um but after the authority we have creature commando which is going to not be that a movie really like i probably won't watch this <laughs> yeah um, yeah you will you i don't will. know i don't know it's um another obscure team uh, this one, however, not a movie. It is an animated uh, HBO Max uh, television show. And all I know about Creature Commando is I found out about them when it was announced. And it's a bunch of fucking weirdos. Uh, it's, they're, they're creatures. They're all monsters. What if it's good-looking animation, though? So, You'll watch it. I don't know. The, the picture they put out was kind of wonky. Yeah, but that was like a comic picture, wasn't it? I don't know. I, I thought it was for the show. Either way, 
Uh, I don't actually remember. They did a they they released a picture with the whole team. You know, you can find it if yeah. you care that much. Uh, the only two members of it I remember though are Weasel, who we met in the Suicide Squad, yeah. who we thought died, but then he didn't. Goated character. Oh, <laughs> a standout in that film. Sean Gunn's performance was fucking second Th- to none. That, that's what I was gonna say. Isn't that James Gunn's brother? Yeah, who plays as him. Yeah, uh, and Frankenstein, just Frankenstein, like actual Frankenstein, <laughs> like Frankenstein. Yeah, cool. Uh, who? Uh, my my personal history with the character of DC's Frankenstein is he looks really cool in Lego Batman 3, DC superheroes, and I would play as him constantly in the free room. So, so he looks cool as a Lego character? Yes. Okay. So, very vital information before you watch Creature Commando. You need to know. I was on the fence before, but now that I know how <laughs> sick he looks as a Lego. <laughs> now that I know I'm that Frankenstein's that shit, a banging Lego man. Hell yeah. I'm dude. watching it day one. Yeah, so Creature Commandos, is that one of the first ones that'll be coming out, or will it be later on? I can't remember. I don't remember. Like I said, I don't remember if they had any exact dates, actually, or or like the lineup. I thought he kind of broke it down in order of the way he was rattling them off, Mm. but that doesn't make sense, because I don't think he said any... Did he say Superman Legacy first? Yes, he did say that. Also, there actually is a picture of him standing in front of an MCU phase timeline-esque image with yeah. all the things on it like where it's you know how Where's kevin feige out. does those yeah. yeah uh and i do think creature commando was towards the middle okay right so now did we do we is there a swamp thing yes you're so right we need to get involved in that yes swamp thing i don't it's a movie isn't it i can't remember <laughs> mm, i think it's a movie why <laughs> but would they I do thought it? I don't they were think, saying swamp thing things i think it was a movie I don't think they would do another TV another show. show, which is just blasphemy. Yeah. That, that show, I haven't watched it. You, I, I you own it, it on DVD. DVD. Yeah, it would, dude. It was like ten bucks at Walmart. Why not? You know? Yeah, it was sick. The well, show that, was so good. Well, that show came out uh, before HBO Max even existed. That was back when they had a DC exclusive. Yeah, it was like DC and Plus. The only it was it was D, it was just called DC Universe. Yeah, it wasn't called Plus. Yes. Yeah. It um and it had like it was DC flicks. It had a few DC live action movies, and then some of the cartoons, and then it had Titans, which is ass. It and had then like it had twelve things thing. that you could so yeah. just like click through. Yeah, well, because it was a comic, uh, it was a comic app. Okay, above anything else, it was for you. To, it's like Marvel Unlimited, but for know, DC. I did yeah, not know that. and then they were like, "What if we put shows on there?" <laughs> and then they did. Yeah, man, they uh. Man, poor DC. They've had a rough time. They just make weird decisions. Like, at a certain point, you got to stop feeling bad and just start blaming. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. you're doing this to yourself at this point. Yeah, thank thank God James Gunn got involved. Hopefully, he, he mm-hmm. straightens some things out. Yeah. Which but, it sounds like it. But yeah, yeah, it does. So, Swamp Thing movie. Looking forward to that. I, I accidentally, I don't know if I ever corrected myself, I accidentally gave you some misinformation on Twitter. About Guillermo del Toro? Yes. Well, that was a rumor that was not confirmed. I found that out later. He uh, still technically could do it. Right. But it, Which would be awesome. It was not confirmed at the time when you, I told you to look at it. You could not convince me of a better director mm-hmm. for Swamp Thing than Guillermo yeah, del Toro. I, I really hope he gets the chance. Like, Swamp Thing is such a cool, really it's a much more emotionally driven character. Mm-hmm. Which is good. We we already talked about how mm-hmm. much uh, you can succeed with emotionally driven characters, but uh, I really feel like the TV show. One of the things that hooked people on it and made people so mad whenever it was canceled after only mm-hmm. you know ten episodes was uh, the show really went nuts with some practical effects and yeah. some body horror mm-hmm. and like. I think that that would be so like Guillermo del Toro. That's his bread and butter mm-hmm. is like practical effects and, you know, creatures of the unknown and shit like that. I, I don't think you could pick a better director than yeah. Guillermo for, for that. So I, that's probably the one I'm most excited about. Mm-hmm. It's very horror adjacent too. Yeah. You know? Um, we, we saw in, uh, MCU's, uh, what was it? Halloween special. Yeah. Werewolf by night. Werewolf by night with uh, man thing, mm-hmm. similar character, Ted, yeah, Ted. My mistake, Ted. <laughs> um, he looked awesome. Oh yeah, and and that that was awesome. That mm-hmm. whole release was really cool. So I'm looking forward to DC getting involved. Yeah, in if they, if they don't get if they don't get Guillermo del Toro, they should get whoever did Werewolf by Night. Michael Giacchino. Yes, 
They should get that'd be good. He's like the goat soundtrack guy, mm-hmm. in my and then opinion. He comes out swinging with a sick ass directorial debut. He can't miss. He dude. can't he miss. Can't he has to be stopped. Here, I have a list of all of his misses. He's wearing too many hats. <laughs> in, ca- in case anybody was wondering, yeah, it's Hunter, a blank paper. Hunter just opened his notebook to a blank page. The yep. list of Michael Giacchino's misses. Yeah, man. He uh he scored uh the Batman mm-hmm. and and you know countless other things. Uh, a lot of great animated movie scores, mm-hmm. uh, including The Incredibles. Yeah, he also did Zootopia. Mm. Awesome soundtrack. He wrote uh, he wrote Shakira Gazelle's anthem. Yes, uh, I I was actually about to start singing it, but uh, <laughs> I don't want to tear my voice. Up Do anymore. everything is that what it was? Yeah, be be anything. You, yeah, it was it was you know it, it was, was something. Nice. It was cute. Yeah, but uh, shout out Michael Giacchino. Yeah, shout out Michael Giacchino. And shout out that Gazelle from Zootopia. Yeah, Michael Giacchino is just... I mean, oh, he didn't second that one. <laughs> he didn't, he didn't. Yeah, shout out Shakira. Gazelle Sh- uh, Shakira. She was cool. She was cool. I mean, I didn't really care about that song so much. I thought, you know, it's cute. Oh, well. But Swamp Thing. is going to be good. It's going to be good. And we're excited. I'm excited. All right, and then the last two, we'll speed through them here so we can get to the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I love that meme. So yeah. I think about it every time. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to jump right into it. Right, jump right into it. 40 minutes in. Uh, but no, the last two are also HBO Max shows. These ones live action. They are Green Lantern Corps, which is a buddy cop detective show. He literally said true detective. Yeah. Like, you can't say, dude, don't say that and then fuck it up. Buddy. Yeah. Because uh, that a, sets a bunch of people's expectations very high. A buddy cop detective show with uh, Hal Jordan and Jon Stewart. I like that we're getting both. I do too. It, it eliminates any debate of who it should be or who it shouldn't. When I think of Green Lantern, I always think of Justice League Unlimited's Jon mm-hmm. Stewart. Mm-hmm. Jon Stewart was a badass dude. Like, I I always thought Green Lantern was such a lame superhero until I watched I've always it. been a pretty big Green Lantern fan. Really? I love the idea. His I, powers are just cool I never, to me. I never liked it until I watched Justice League Unlimited and just like... He, he's a badass this, isn't it? this is going to be very embarrassing but when i was younger i actually really really liked the ryan reynolds 2011 movie well that's not that embarrassing i mean it's uh hey nostalgia strong yeah you know, it'll it get is you. It, and honestly it does still have a special place in my heart yeah there's nothing but, wrong with that but like that scene where he makes the hot wheels track and then everyone makes fun of him for it it's fucking hilarious i've never seen the movie you haven't seen it wow yeah i'm not upset i haven't seen no it. <laughs> i mean you shouldn't be but that's just that's wild to me i feel yeah. like everyone's unfortunately seen that movie nope nope not me but yeah i'm excited for green lantern Corps because I, I i just think green lantern should be used more yeah, dc he, has he, a problem of just like which i think it's good that they brought james gunn in because dc has a huge problem of just sleeping on very cool characters dc has obviously a huge roster mm-hmm. but i think dc has arguably uh, a bigger uh, top top end roster yeah. you know what i mean because yeah. of the justice league mm-hmm. the justice league is arguably more famous i guess i shouldn't say this cuz the avengers is obviously famous mm-hmm. famous now yeah but uh, when i was young growing up when i think of you know superhero team ups i think of like the old like yeah. 70s like shitty cartoon justice friends mm-hmm. you know and and uh, that top end of of dc characters mm-hmm. are, are is pretty big you know my biggest culture shock of all time is when i found out that before robert downey jr's iron man uh came out in 2008 iron man was considered a b-list character did you know that yeah i had no clue yeah that movie almost didn't get made because marvel didn't have faith that an iron man movie would sell wow you know that's funny too because when marvel was actually giving movie rights back in like the late 90s Mm -hmm. and early thousands it was to like obscure characters (laughs) not obscure (laughs) but just like blade mm-hmm. and then like dare daredevil's a B, mm-hmm. definitely a b-list character yeah and then uh what else did they have punisher 04 mm-hmm. you know thomas jane <clears throat> coded movie they're really good yeah check out check out the yeah if, if, you, if you ever want to hear anyone talk about that actually a uh, link in the description if you're watching on youtube <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah if you want a good review on that <laughs> we know a guy a couple guys chances are you've probably already seen it <laughs> it's got a lot of views yeah, you're probably mad. You're like, this isn't a movie. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, um, 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 yeah, I like the top end of DC's mm-hmm. roster more than Marvel's, arguably. I don't know if I'd say that. But I, I, I think that I, DC I, has the number one superhero in the whole world. You you do love Batman. Batman is the number one superhero in the entire He's, world, in the history of the whole world. <laughs> I do think if I showed a picture to like an old lady at work, and, I was of, and like one was Batman and one was Iron Man, she would probably recognize Batman 
over Iron Man. Iron Man is definitely A list now, though. Yeah, uh, but I, but I do think even people who like for people who don't follow it as closely as as people like us do, I do think Batman is more recognizable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. What's the last one? The last we have to one on the slate is kind of weird. I don't know. They all have been. <laughs> well, yeah, but I, I just, I don't know. Weirder it, than Creature Command? I just, <laughs> well, not weird in the sense of like it's a weird property. Just weird as in like the concept. I, I don't know. It's the Wonder Woman. It is. Yeah. Well, lack thereof. It is called The Amazons, and it is a prequel uh, before Wonder Woman's birth about it, life on Themyscira. Yeah, isn't it trying to be geared almost like a Game of Thrones? Yes, yes, it is. Yeah, I don't know about that. Man. I don't know about that. Don't I just don't that. know. Um, I'm I, sure. Nor do good, I know. But I don't I, know. <laughs> <laughs> Baseline. Needless to say, we don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it it could suck. Could be awesome. Um, I'm sure it'll be fine. I probably won't watch it. I don't really care about the Amazonians outside of uh, Wonder Woman. So. Yeah, if I'm being honest, I, I've never been super into Wonder Woman as a character. I think that uh, the first Wonder Woman film, though, was really cool. Yeah, I, I love the first Wonder Woman. And, and I also think the second one is uh, a little underrated. I still have never seen it. I, I think a lot of people give it a lot of shit. I have not watched it. And rightfully so in some areas. But uh, you want to talk about our dad, Pedro Pascal? He is awesome in that movie. Is he? He is extremely awesome. He has a, a whole sequence at the end of the movie. Um, it's very emotional. And uh, he's obviously, he's good at that shit. Yeah. So, uh, and I, you know, I, I thought, uh, I, I thought that movie got a lot of, uh, undeserved critis- criticism. Mm. So, uh, with that said, I might not watch this show either. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, maybe it, we'll have to see, mm-hmm. but it, out of everything that was announced that and creature commandos, it's probably my two, uh, least interested. Yeah. I I'd say I'd, I'd second that. We're gonna have to see trailers, though. You know, this yeah, is how yeah, things work. Yeah, uh, you know, we 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 can say anything we want on titles and descriptions, but when they start releasing footage of stuff, right? The way they're advertised mm-hmm. can really, you, you know, what I mean. Uh, Creature Commandos could be something. It could come out and just have a really cool uh, mm-hmm. uh, trailer, and I could be like, "Wow, I'm not missing that." Yeah, and same and same for the uh, Life on Themyscira. So you never know. Yeah, but exciting news: we can finally talk about the movie. <laughs> <laughs> now we're allowed. <laughs> That's the exciting news. We are finally going to talk about the movie. That's a great segue. That was in the title uh, of this episode: Scream Five and or Scream Twenty Twenty Two. Yeah, I'm just going to call it Scream Five. Yeah, but it, 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 like Brett said, it's confusing as fuck. Here at the almost top of the hour, yeah, let, it's, let's jump right into it. Yeah, yeah, let's jump right into <laughs> it. Um, like I said earlier, this movie was directed by the tag team, Matt Bettinelli, Open and Tyler Gillett. Um, they directed the one that just came out a couple days ago, Scream 6, the sequel to this one that we're reviewing. And they also directed, uh, Ready or Not that came out, I want to say 2018, 2019, 2020, 2019, I think Some, somewhere in there, um, I think it's a pretty cool, pretty unique movie. Yeah. The, the premise of it is mm-hmm. um, maybe something we'll review someday. Hmm. Uh, we're not going to dive too much into that, though. This uh, Scream 2022, Scream 5. <laughs> there I go, doing it again. <laughs> we're going to call it Scream 5. He did God. not decide. He lied. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, stars Nev Campbell, Courtney Cox, David Arquette, some legacy characters there. Uh, newcomers, Melissa Barrera, Jenna Ortega, and Jack Quaid. Mm. I just told Brett he didn't know this. Uh, the, I did not. Uh, the son of uh, Dennis Quaid. And Brett does not know who Dennis I Quaid never is. Never heard of that man before in my life. I was shown a picture of him, and I'd never seen him either. He, he's been in so much stuff, but now that I think of it, and after showing you his picture, mm-hmm. it's like, he's been in so many things, but I can't, like, he hasn't been in that one big yeah. thing. You yeah. Know? Uh, he's definitely like a, a B or C tier Harrison Ford. Mm. Um. This movie was budgeted uh, twenty four million dollars. Its U.S. gross was eighty one million, and its worldwide gross was one hundred and thirty seven million. So this movie made bucks. That's oh, why yeah. it got a sequel the very next year. Yeah, and uh, it, it which is up, not something that's happened for this franchise since the jump from one to two. Yeah, one to two did the same thing, and uh, it, 
you know, subject to opinion here. Obviously, I don't have an opinion on Scream 6, mm. but one I think that 1 and 2 are both quality films. Uh, you think 5 and 6 are both quality, I right? do, yes. Yeah, spoiler alert. Um, I like 5 too, but we'll get to that. Mm-hmm. Uh, this movie was, all, I always like to drop, you know, who does the score, who the composer is. Uh, this guy's name is Brian Tyler. Mm. Uh, this soundtrack didn't do much of anything for me. Other than the, and there's nothing I can remember specifically. Ex- exactly. exactly. <laughs> yeah. The reinvigoration of Red Right Hand by Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds was in there. That's all I needed anyway. So that's good enough for me. But uh, this movie is, uh, as Brett stated earlier, earlier rather, a requel. Uh, and the plot: twenty five years after a streak of bur- brutal murders shocked the quiet town of Woodsboro, California. A new killer dons the ghost face mask and begins targeting a group of teenagers to resurrect secrets from the town's deadly past. Man, that's a pretty lame plot right there. <laughs> <laughs> I got that right from the back of the Blu-ray. Um, I mean, that is what happens. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> that is like, like you could have been like, Hunter, what's your day going to compose of? I'm going to wake up and I'm going to eat and then I'm going to go to sleep, sleep <laughs> at some point. So that's how that plot was broke down. But uh, if we're going to get involved here with the plot, uh, obviously, like Brett said, it's 25 years after the original. Um, The plot really consists of these new characters, Mm -hmm. how they tie to other legacy characters, maybe characters that have been killed off in past movies. Mm -hmm. Brett, what do you what do you think of uh, the, the new plot here with the idea of a requel and how it all gets thrown out on the table? Uh, I dig it. I dig it a lot. Um, Sam, specifically, and you can touch on it later because you told me something upstairs that I don't 100% agree with, uh, but I think her connection to, of course... Sam is the lead. Yeah, Sam is our lead girl. Our, our Well, I, I don't even know if you can really say final girl, as there are multiple final girls. I think that's one of the flaws with this movie is too many fucking people lived. <laughs> Where was the rest of the kills? That is true. I, 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 I do... I do see, I do agree with that. But I, but I think Sam is uh, subjectively, uh, played by Melissa Barrera, mm-hmm. uh, is our final girl. Yeah, I, I, she's the main character. And what Brett's getting at me denoting upstairs yeah. is one of the biggest criticisms about this movie coming out is she's not a great main character, not a great lead. But anyways, go ahead. And yeah, well, that, 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 that um, I don't know if I agree with that because I, I, I liked her a lot in this movie. And I will say she is, you know, every character in this movie, and I, I can't talk about it too much, obviously, but... Every character in this movie is way better in six than they are in this one. Yeah. But I will say in terms of introductions, I, I think we got a good roster going on here. I, I do like, um, I like, uh, sorry. <laughs> I like, I like their ties to the original. I love, I love that Sam is, spoiler alert. Yeah. Yeah. Billy sp- Loomis' his daughter. We spoil everything in no, this. No, I know. So I just no like to deal. say it sometimes. Yeah, I think that's actually really cool. Gives the crowd what they want. Because mm-hmm. um, we're here for the original. Yeah. And like Brett, well, not, Brett said this before, but like I just said as well, this is a requel. Mm-hmm. You know, it kind of uh, tiptoes that line of, is it a remake or is it a prequel? Mm-hmm. Uh, sequel. Sequel, rather. Think, uh, think Halloween. Yeah. yeah. Which again... Like we were saying with the title, I you know I see exactly why they called it that because they were they were going for they're like well you know even if you haven't seen one through four maybe you can bounce on in here because it gives you it gives you everything that's necessary to understand what's going right. on. But I will say in terms of other requels, this is by far the loosest in terms of the re part. It, it's it is a direct sequel to one through four. Yes, it which is. I saw a tweet. Um, that I really liked that was talking about, you know, how we were talking about how Scream is so strong as a franchise. There's mm-hmm. like no bad entries. But what I love about it and what this person said in their tweet, what they loved about it is that even the ones that are considered bad, you know, Scream don't care. Yeah. They, they play right. It's still canon. Yes. They're not going to pussy out of five fucking movies, Halloween, <laughs> to just pretend they didn't happen. You know, three and four aren't that good, you know? There's stuff to like, but they're not like that great. Right. Scream 5 doesn't care. They happen, and we're going to talk about what happened in them. And it, obviously, I haven't seen Scream 6, but I like how it reinvigorates characters that were skipped over in 5. 
with uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Hayden Panettiere's character mm-hmm. uh, Kirby. Yeah, that's her name. Um, yeah, but uh, I really like that the legacy characters that are involved are actually not related to the new characters. The no, new characters yeah. are related the to ev- other legacy characters. Yeah. So it's kind of like this cool influx of mm-hmm. you know familiar faces, but new faces that feel familiar take aspects of familiar yeah. faces and this is something they touch on throughout the movie mm-hmm. a lot yeah. too you know and it wouldn't be a screen movie without that yeah uh to touch on another sp- uh, specific example of that uh randy favorite boy randy my man randy fuck you scream too for killing randy it's the worst part of the movie worst part of the movie um but randy has a niece and a nephew chad and mindy mm-hmm. and mindy is our new Randy. Yeah. She, she she takes after her uncle and she talks about it. She's big, like big movie buff. Yeah, big movie buff. Talks about she's the one. She gives us a whole like. She's the one minute. who gives us the Randy speech, the she, rules of the movie. She gives the five minute like requel yeah. definition yeah. exposition yep. halfway through the movie. The rules of the requel. Yeah, it's it's really cool and interesting. And like I said, it wouldn't be a screen movie without the self awareness. Mm-hmm. Um, with that said, you know, with the way the plot develops and stuff, this movie does take itself seriously sometimes mm-hmm. too. And uh, this is something I was telling Brett is, uh, I don't know if it's just the production value or like the way that it was executed when I first saw it in theaters, but I just think the kills were like extra violent yeah. in this. Yeah, there's some gross shit. Yeah, and uh, I guess we're kind of getting away from the plot here. Uh, there's not really much else to touch base on with the plot. Not really, though, not than, until we get to the... Yeah, you got new characters... That are getting attacked by a new yeah. ghost face. And they, for, call, they get the legacy characters to come and back and try about, to help them. For about two hours, a lot of them die. Yeah. <laughs> and then at the end, we find well, out I, who was doing it. I think, I think not enough of them die. I well, wanted to see more death. A lot of them get attacked. I wanted more blood and guts. Um, but anyways, uh, I have in the way we break things down, mm-hmm. like always, the setting. Not much to speak on here with the setting. It's in Woodsboro. We're back in Woodsboro. Woodsboro again. Can't go wrong. You know, it's 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 classic. Um there's a sequence that takes place in a hospital, but uh, the biggest thing with the setting is the uh, third act mm-hmm. takes place in Stu Mocker's house, yeah. which is really cool. Upon my second viewing of this movie, though, I was a little bit like, and and this will I'll touch base on this on my final you know uh, score mm-hmm. criticism a little bit more, but I feel like it really this movie like really leans hard in nostalgia mm-hmm. yeah. sometimes with the final act taking place mm-hmm. in Stu's old house being one particular uh, example of that. But other than that, you know, there's not really a whole lot to touch base on in the setting. Woodsboro, it's still there. Still people dying in Woodsboro. Mm-hmm. Still a ghost face doing it. <laughs> um, other than that, uh, character design and the set design in general, um, this is something I think was kind of funny and... Uh, worked well with this movie because this movie, you know, like I said, it's a screen movie. It's got to be self-aware. Mm-hmm. It really uses aspects of when it was made. Mm-hmm. Like all these kids act like kids that I yeah. would know. Yeah. You know, like they act like mm-hmm. zoomers, uh, yeah. you know, really involved in their phones. Uh, the opening sequence of the movie, whenever Jenna Ortega's character is asked, mm-hmm. you know, what's your favorite yeah. scary movie? And she Googles she talks the about, answers. Well, that is one part of it, mm-hmm. yes. But I was going to say, just whenever uh, he asks, like, what her favorite scary movie is, well, you know, I really like the Boba I like Ev- uh, Elevated Horror. Yeah. yeah. And, and, like, she's talking about movies that had just came out in the past, like, mm-hmm. fucking five, six yeah. years. Um, so I really like the way they injected that into the character design and also just the way some of the people dress. Mm hmm. And we talked about this with the character Amber. Like, she just looks super young. Yeah. And I think that's just the way high school kids look now. Mm-hmm. I, like, <laughs> Are they in high school? Are they supposed to be high schoolers? I, I believe so, yes. Mm-hmm. When no, it, they are, because in six, they're going to college. Well, well whenever they're at the, uh, the the pool hall at the bar, mm-hmm. they're not allowed to drink while you're they're right. there. You're He's so drinking right. He's drinking like a Coke. Yeah. So, um, other than that, as we talked about your uh, mask that you had, mm-hmm. uh, the ghost face mask is uh, 10 out of 10. Mm-hmm. Can't be trumped. Yeah. They, they, did you know that there are slight differences in every movie? Really? Yeah. There's a, there's a well, video. I know the new movie goes like the Yeah, Halloween it's all like, but movie. I mean like just the structure of it. There's, um, there's a video. There's this really good video by uh, this channel called Tell It Animated. Um, they, they do animated breakdowns of like the evolution of a character throughout mm-hmm. different movies and they have one on Ghostface and it 
it does a pretty good job of breaking down all the differences between uh, the mask. It's 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 all really small shit yeah, that doesn't subtle. matter. Like yeah. the eyes are a little squintier, or like the cheekbones are like sculpted in a different way. I'm gonna have to check that out. Yeah, no, it it, it is really cool. It's pretty neat. Um, yeah, but Ghostface was timeless. Uh, oh yeah, the, I think if they ever changed him, it would be the end of the world. Brett, which Brett, is why that MTV series bombed. Yeah, what did they do to him in that? He's got like a well in the final season it's just Ghostface right but for the first two because I think there's three seasons uh, I haven't watched it um, but for the first two it's like an imitation Ghostface who instead of using the very widely available Ghostface costume yeah. has like it's it's almost like a hockey mask it's like one of those weird like molded mannequin masks like it just looks like a normal person's like blank face and they like spray painted the eyes black it's really weird that sucks it's super weird and it sucks especially whenever it's supposed to be like a play on ghost face yeah but i think it's because which is hilarious to me how rights and stuff works because it's like why would you sell the ip to mtv if they weren't allowed to use, use ghost mask, face yeah but that's like how gotham uh wasn't allowed to call jerome the joker right it's like really? you can use all these characters you can say all these things I never but you knew can't that. have joke yeah that's why that. they don't call him that wasn't that cameron monahan yes it yeah. was yeah but dude's so, underrated so i i do believe that those first two seasons he looks like that because they legally couldn't use the ghost face that's insane and then i think me. that was lifted for the third season and that's why it's regular ghost face but yeah super weird um talking about the characters here um I do like the, sorry, I'm saying um multiple times. Um, I do <laughs> really like the newly introduced characters. Yeah. Aside from Melissa Barea's Sam, I do think that she kind of isn't great as a lead. I don't think she's bad by any means. I just don't see how she was the one that they were like, this girl's got to carry this franchise mm-hmm. now, um, which that might change in the sixth one. I know you said everybody's a lot better in the sixth mm-hmm. one. Oh, yeah. Um, I do like Jenna Ortega, even though she's not used in this movie a mm-hmm. whole lot. The shining star here, though, is Jack Quaid. Yeah. He is really great as Sam's boyfriend throughout mm-hmm. the movie. And then at the conclusion of the movie, turns out he's the killer. Mm-hmm. You know, the, <laughs> of course, the boyfriend is. He, uh, he had me pegged from the start. Yeah, yeah. Never trust the love interest. Yeah. And the way, the way he flips that scene yeah. is really great. Dude, I love... I love the line where after he stabs her, he goes, I know, it's a bummer, it's me. Yeah. Dude, yeah. that line, oh, yeah. what, that it's just such a good line. And he delivers it so well. Like, he's so earnest about it. Yeah, see, like, there are, you know, there's two killers. Mm-hmm. It's him and then Jenna Ortega's character, Tara, her friend, Amber, mm-hmm. are the two killers. And I think that uh, Amber is really going over the top trying to be like Stu. The Stu yeah, character. she's definitely trying to be Stu. And, and she kind of sucks at yeah, it. A little bit. I think Jack Quaid is doing both Stu and Billy. Yeah, yeah. He <laughs> I really think he's is. great at yeah. both. No, Jack Quaid is just such a phenomenal actor. Um, Jack Quaid, of course, is best known for his role as Hugh Campbell in The Boys. Yeah. Which I will say, uh, besides Scream 5, is the only thing I've ever seen him in. Yeah. Which is a travesty. Put Jack Quaid in more stuff, please. And, Throw and, back know, to our fan cast episode. I'd still love to see him as Donatello. You know, I'm I'm surprised he hasn't been in more stuff you'd, since, yeah, you'd since this movie since, came out. Spe- since the success of The Boys. Well, both, yeah. I mean, it, they're both successful. Yeah. And he's kind of the lead. In, well, he's not the lead in this, but he's the killer. You yeah. Know? And um, he's just so good. Jack Quaid is doing the best job in this movie. Yeah, he out steals of everyone the here, Jack Quaid is doing the best job. Um, the legacy characters we get, Nev Campbell as Sidney Prescott, the original final girl mm-hmm. and the entire series, uh, her, Gail Weathers, Courtney Cox, and uh, David Arquette as Dewey. Uh, I really kind of feel like they're phoned in a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think the not, acting was great. Not Dewey. I think David Arquette's Dewey doing was a good. really good job. He was the only one that was good. Yeah. Spoiler alert, they kill him halfway through yeah, the movie. They kill Dewey, which I will say... One of them had to die. ...was a good choice. One of yeah, them needed to die. One of the legacy characters had to die, and I think I think they did Dewey because they knew that that would be the one that would have the most impact. Yes. You know, they're not going to kill Sydney, I, but, you know, Gail 
kind of sucks. I think everyone. I think it. I think sad. everybody wanted. Gale it'd be to die. sad if Gale died, but no one would care nearly as much as if they killed fucking Dewey. Dewey man. And has that's exactly been everybody's favorite, did. and that's why for so long I think in the franchise they've yeah, always they always with fake us out thinking him. he's gonna die. Yeah. Well, he actually in the original script of the first movie he was meant to be dead. Really? Right. He was supposed to die, but to leave it open ended, uh, the director. Wes Craven uh, told David Arquette, "Hey, when you're being wheeled by on the stretcher, do a little do a little hand motion just to like allude to the fact that you might come back." And then David Arquette gives a big ass thumbs up <laughs> as he's wheeled by. He was like, "I'm making more money. Come on, guys, <laughs> yeah. um, don't so, kick me out of the sequel." So, and then that becomes the running gag: Dewey will get hurt, but he's not dead. And then, so I think that's another reason that he was the perfect choice to kill in this. You know, one. that's one thing that I think you have to applaud the Scream franchise for too. Is uh, you know, it's no holds barred. They like to kill the fan favorites. Yeah, Randy in, in mm-hmm. the second one, Dewey Absolutely. in this one. Um, me, me and Kaylee actually, because um, before we went and saw Scream Six, we binged because I'd only ever seen the first one when we reviewed it uh, in season one, uh, which was great. But I'd only ever seen that one. And then 6 was coming out, and I was like, I want to see Scream 6 in theaters. I yeah. think that'll be a cool thing to do. Yeah. So I sat down with my girlfriend, and we watched 1, 2, one day, because we ran out of time. But then we watched 3, 4, and 5 another day. We binged all of them in two days. And one thing we said to each other was, like, I we really liked how they weren't afraid to kill main characters. Yeah. Um, another death that I think is in the franchise a little underrated, but something I always thought was bullshit. You know, in the first one, we get teased of this potential villain, Cotton Weary, mm-hmm. played by Lee Schreiber, and he's only seen in, like, a, a sequence on TV. Yeah, it's one scene. Yeah, and, and he's, he's just like a, na- a pretty big-name actor. And then in the sequel, in Scream 2, he's only in the final act, really. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's got a couple little scenes. Yeah. But I always thought, like, okay, well, he kind of becomes a hero mm-hmm. at the end and saves Sydney yeah. at the end of Scream 2. And then when he's in the introduction of Scream, Scream 3, 3, I'm like, I'm like, oh, cool, more cotton. And then yeah. I realize, no, he's going to die. He's the opening kill. Yeah, he is the opening mm-hmm. death. Fuck. And, uh, yeah, so Scream's not afraid to kill the mm-hmm. big names. And we got more of that in Scream 5 mm-hmm. with Dewey. You know, unfortunately. Speaking about opening kills, that's another thing I really like about this one is is as derivative as it is and how heavily leaning it is on on the the overall franchise. I do think they do a lot of cool new stuff yeah. and and subvert your expectations because the opening kill of Scream Five is not a kill at all. Nobody dies in the opening of Scream Five. That is true. That is very true. Yeah, because it, it's Jenna Ortega, and when it actually opened, right? Which, granted, watching a movie after the fact while a sequel is coming out is kind of a detriment because the movie opens and it's Jenna Ortega. Yeah. And I was like, Jenna Ortega is the opening kill. That's insane. She's on all the posters. Yeah. But then I remembered, I was like, wait a minute. She's in the trailer for six. <laughs> she can't die. Yeah. And I was like, and that that's kind of how I felt with all the characters, right? Because it's like, oh, they're all in the trailer for Scream 6. None of these people die. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, like I said a minute ago, uh, I do think that's one of this movie's flaws is there's not a whole lot of murder. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's at least two, three sequences where somebody, there are four sequences where somebody almost dies. Yeah. Uh, the, Tara in the opening act, mm-hmm. Sam, uh, Mindy, mm-hmm. and Chad. And Chad. Um, yeah, that's kind of a bummer. Chad is the weirdest survive because that dude got, he got stabbed like eight he times. He got brutalized. Yeah. He got bodied, dude. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, talking about the characters just a little bit more here, uh, like I said, cause I've just been bouncing all over the place, but, uh, Sam is okay as the lead. She's not great. She's not bad. Um, I think Tara is good. Jenna Ortega. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this was kind of right before she blew up in mm-hmm. 2022. And I think they realized that after the fact, yeah. I don't know if she's in six a ton, not as much as you would think. Well, because she's barely in five. She's in the opening I, sequence. I actually, in my cons, I wrote waste of Jenna Ortega. Yeah. Well, they didn't realize that they day. didn't know it. You, you know, you got to think of the time they didn't know a month after this came out. And I was talking to Brett about this upstairs. She's like the new age scream queen mm-hmm. a month after this came out. She was a secondary character in the movie X, a, a really cool a 24 horror movie. And then in the fall, when did that come out? I think November, Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it released in November, Tim yeah. Burton's Wednesday miniseries on Netflix. Uh, 
it's not a mini series. It's just a TV yeah, series. Yeah, it's a show. <laughs> uh, whoops. But uh, yeah, that that blew up mm-hmm. on Netflix, and uh, so now you know she's huge. Yeah, which is why I said I you know. Which, granted, you got to think about production time. So, Wednesday wouldn't have been out while they were filming Scream 6. Right. I don't think. Um, or it would, like, just be just coming out. Yeah. So, maybe maybe that's another reason why. And and she is in a, in a lot more, obviously, because she's not in the hospital for the whole movie. Yeah. But, you know, with, you know, her status now, it, it was weird to see how they she's not still not... utilize her more. No, but she does have some great moments. But it, you would think she'd be in it more than she actually is. Um, but other than that, the new characters, uh, including Mindy, Chad, uh, Wes, mm-hmm. <laughs> I do like his little name yeah. uh, in honor of Wes Craven. Um, these these characters kind of don't really have a lot of personality. No, Mindy probably the most because, like mm-hmm. Brett was saying, you know, she like kind of takes after mm-hmm. Randy. But some of it's kind of like I don't want to say is. Uh, a little ham fisted, mm-hmm. but it's it's just a little too on the nose for yeah. me. Um, but other than that, like you said, they, in the sixth installment, mm-hmm. they get more time to shine. Yeah, um, my take on the characters is uh, sort of the same as yours in terms of Wes and uh, Liv, who we haven't mentioned because she's fucking oh, yeah. a nothing. I character, forgot about her. Absolute uh, nothing character. This is uh, Chad's girlfriend. Yeah. The, the issue with them, and this is an issue that actually carries over to Six, is like, when they introduce your, these characters, it's like, all right, these guys are either going to die, or they did it. You yeah. know, because yeah. we're not, it's not telling us anything about them, they're barely fleshed out, it's like, so these guys, these side characters here, you're Wes, you're Liv, it's like, you're Amber, it's like, these guys are either dead meat, shout out dead meat, <laughs> or they're the killer. Try right. dead meat. So, so um, but with uh, our our main our main guys, our core four, our Tara, um, Sam, yeah. Mindy, and uh, Chad. Chad is the weakest of those four, which is why I love him in six because he's so much better in six than he is in this one. Uh, but my favorite thing about the characters, specifically Sam and Mindy, is you know movies that have characters that are related to legacy characters have this trend where it's in name only they're just like look at this guy they're related to this other person you know and like that's where it stops so i love that they you know invoke the spirit of that character it's like randy's niece probably would have grown up watching movies with him yeah probably would take away some of his personality now sam makes a little less sense because she didn't know Billy. <laughs> she never met him. Right. Which I think it's weird that she sees a ghost version of him. Let's go ahead and talk this, about a yeah, negative for yeah. both of us is the ghost Billy. Yeah, ghost Billy is a cool idea, but weirdly executed. Yeah. Um, she did not know this man. Yeah. She, there's no, re- which I do think it's kind of cool that her vision of him in her mind is him, him like the, the day he got murdered. Yeah. Or not murdered, but because I Because I took that as like, that's what would have been like in the newspapers. Yeah. That's what it would have been like on the news talking about the story. That would be like the only thing she knows about him. About her dad is yeah. that he was a is psychopath. Is that he was a psychopath. Yeah. But, and and this is a pro anacon for me because I love that being Billy Loomis's daughter, you know, she kind of takes away some of that attitude, some of those mannerisms. Yeah. But also, why the fuck would she take away any of those mannerisms of a man she did not grow up with? Right. I hate the idea, and this is something other movies do. I hate the idea that personality is genetic. Yeah. It's like, oh, you're just like your dad. Apple doesn't fall too far from the tree to a character that did not grow up in a household with that dad. Yeah. That's not how development works. No, <laughs> you, no, know? you You pick up on traits from yeah. being exposed so to there's, somebody. So there is no reason she would act anything like him. Yeah. And it leads to a really cool kill, but it's like, why is she doing that? Yeah. You know, that's not, <laughs> I don't know why she would take that away. Yeah. It also leads to a dumbass line that I hate. <laughs> Yeah, you did hate that line. It's so I hated it the moment I heard it when I watched it with Kaylee. She said that, and I was like, "That's a stupid fucking line." Yeah, when I when I first saw it in theaters, I didn't really realize it, but sitting there with you watching it earlier, I was like, "Wow, that does." Suck. Yeah, for context, um, some of the dialogues is generally not great in this yeah, movie. Yeah, some of the some of the I, I <laughs> well, in my cons, I wrote that one shitty line Sam says at the end, <laughs> but I, I do think there are there are a few characters that have some. 
There's a couple sequences lines. that are that are cool. You know, I do think that Mindy's sequence where she talks about the requel mm-hmm. is necessary. Yeah, and I think it's cool. I think it goes on a bit long. Um, yeah, like she has another one in six that goes on way too long. Really? Yeah. Me and me and Kaylee both in the theater were like, man. She just, she's still going. <laughs> I think every time Chad talks, he thinks he's funny and he's not. I think that uh, every time Liv, well, Liv doesn't really talk that much in general anyway. She's barely in it. I also think that Wes mm-hmm. um, doesn't have very many yeah. lines. Again, that's what I'm saying. These characters that you know are either going to die or they did it. Yeah, they're like cannon fodder. Yeah, that's like, that's exactly the term. Um, yeah, there's just uh, the dialogue's very mm-hmm. shaky in my opinion. Yeah. For for context, the line that I'm talking about that I hate so so much that Sam says, "You gotta say it." I, I'm gonna say it. You're over there, like <clears throat> I'm, I'm gagging at the thought of the line. Whoever wrote that should be fired. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It might just be the delivery, but the line itself is lame. Anyway, uh, Jack Quaid, Richie is like killing her, and she's like, "You're you're the because they're trying to frame her." Right as the villain, because the their um we didn't talk about it. The motivation this time around is that the stab movie franchise, the movie franchise within this franchise, uh, has gone off the fucking rails. And Richie and Amber are super fans, and they want the movies back to the original stab movies that were based on true events. So they set out to recreate true events for the movies to then draw inspiration from, and they were gonna frame Sam as the villain in all of it. Yeah. And so he's talking, he's doing his big villain monologue. He's like, you're the villain, you lose, that's the rule. And and Sam's crawling towards Billy's old knife, right? Yeah, and Ghost Billy's like... Yeah, yeah Ghost Billy like, <laughs> like, gives her the nod, like, a, like go get it, baby. Like a hint in a video game, he's like, it's right there. <laughs> he's kind of like, it actually reminds me of, this is totally off off book, but um, the, the Rose DLC for Resident Evil 8. I never played it. Oh, <sighs> Damn. I know. I'm a bad fan. Ethan is kind of like a ghost dad, and he oh. literally shows Rose around. That's so funny. Not physically, but he like writes words on the walls and like gold sparkles, and he'll point you towards like extra ammo and health items. And so that kind of reminded me of that. But he That's like funny. does a little head nudge towards the knife, and she was crawling towards it, and she goes, I'm going to add a new rule. And she grabs the knife, and she's like, Don't fuck with the daughter of a psychopath. <laughs> Or like a no, yeah, she says serial don't. Killer. Yeah, serial killer. She goes, don't fuck with the daughter of a serial killer. Yeah, it's it just like, kind of makes Jesus you cringe. Christ. Don't <laughs> that was a it just such a bad line, and she delivers it. It's just yeah, cringe is the best way to describe it. It really, it's the worst line in the movie. Um. Yeah. So speaking of dialogue, I guess that kind of falls under our last category here that we're going to touch on: production and direction. Um. I think this movie in general was pretty well directed. Whenever you're directing the fifth installment of a franchise that the last four were made by the same guy, Mm -hmm. you got big shoes to fill, especially whenever it's Wes Craven, Mm -hmm. Wes fucking Craven. Like whenever you think of like all time horror directors, he's got to be top five. Oh yeah. uh, For sure. Top 10. But in my opinion, he's, you know, he's somewhere in the Mm -hmm. top five probably. Um, uh, this team of, uh, Bettinelli open and Gillett, that they, I think they do a good job. As I said before, I really like their first big uh, feature film, mm-hmm. Ready or Not. Um, I think some of the writing, obviously, as we talked about with the dialogue, is shaky. Uh, one of my favorite things, though, about the production mm-hmm. here is I think all the kills, although not super creative and not many of them, they're very impactful. Yeah. Uh, I think some of the sound design is mm-hmm. really nasty. Mm-hmm. You hear like a lot of squelching yeah. whenever yeah. they're stabbing. Mm-hmm. And every time you see somebody get stabbed, you see the stab wound yeah. afterwards, mm-hmm. and there is blood spraying everywhere. There's mm-hmm. a lot of blood in this. Uh, there's like this uh, throwaway punk character earlier in the film mm. that uh, he's one of the earlier kills. He just gets one like quick little like yeah. in the, in the jugular, and it sounds really gross. Mm-hmm. And blood is just spraying out as he's trying to crawl away. Mm-hmm. And also uh, shout out Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, Red Right Hand, yeah. the song that is in the entire franchise plays right here shout out red right hand shout out red right hand also that song is in guillermo del toro's hellboy movie oh yeah you know why wouldn't it be oh yeah he's he's got the red right hand (laughs) um but yeah i really like the the way all the kills are and Mm -hmm. amber's death is also really really cool uh she gets set ablaze after Mm -hmm. they pour hand sanitizer on her um so i really enjoyed that too other than that you know Mm -hmm. 
we just get a bunch of stabbings. Yeah. Which is kind of lame. But, I, like I said, I like the way that they executed them. No pun intended. <laughs> and uh, I do like the way that they executed them. I, I, think, it's, I think the sound design... Uh, combined with the way it looked and all the blood was really fucking badass. Mm-hmm. Scream 6 is also a little low on the kill count. Shout out Dead Meat. Uh, <laughs> um, Shout but, out Dead Meat. But there are some fucking gross ones, dude. That's awesome. Like, don't, don't spoil it. I won't. Thing. I won't. I'm not going to say anything more than that. Just know that there are some really, really good kills in this movie. Even if there's not a ton of them, some really good ones that I, I, I think you'll like. You know, if you think about the franchise in general, it's kind of like that. Um, you always start with a big, like, really dramatic kill at the beginning, but there's not many that are, like, you know, people watch, like, the Friday the 13th mm-hmm. franchise or, you know, other franchises, mm-hmm. other slasher franchises, and they're like, how, what, how are they going to get creative yeah. with these kills? And Scream, I think what it uh, uh, lacks in creativity, there's always a lot of impact mm-hmm. in it. Um, I still think the best kill in the whole franchise is uh, Rose McGowan's character in the first one, the garage door yeah. death scene. I love that mm-hmm. so much. Loved it so much, I named my daughter after. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Shout out Tatum. Shout out little baby garage door. Yeah. Yeah, we'll never let Tatum go near I'll never have a garage door on this property, <laughs> yeah. by God. Um, but other than that, you know, I don't have a whole lot great to say for the uh, production team and the direction. Um, it looks fine. You know, yeah. I, I, I like it. Nothing it's better than Scream 4 did. Nothing stood out uh, as far as cinematography wise, but uh, it, you can touch base on what you mean by Scream 4 uh, with the, uh, you're, you're just saying in general, it was like not lit well or. Oh, no. Scream 4 is, is so ugly. I don't know. It's just like a, like a shitty color palette. I don't know whose idea it was. No, it's like just the, just like the shots themselves, like the camera, the way the camera is set up and used. It's like it's got fucking schmutz on it. It's like someone forgot to wipe the lens. Everything is super blurry, and then they they it's super overexposed. So all like, the brights are way too bright. It's like they borrowed like daytime TV's camera for yeah, the entire film. Like it, it genuinely it upsets me so Looks much. It's like a soap opera. It upsets me more than it should. It, it really does. And it, I get what I get what you're saying. Like it made it hard to watch because the whole movie looks like that. And I was like, "This is so. This is the ugliest fucking movie I've ever seen in my life." That's so funny. I I, I was I haven't seen Scream Four in forever. Excuse me, in forever, and uh, sounds to me like I really didn't miss much, huh? Not really. Scream Scream Four is my least favorite one. You know, if I after had, watching all of them back to back to back. Yeah, like I said, I haven't seen Scream Four in forever. I remember liking and it, and I got nervous, right? Because I was like, maybe I'm not liking them as much now because. I'm, I'm getting fatigued. But then yeah. we watched Scream 5 and it was really good. And yeah. I was like, oh, okay, never mind. Scream 4 just sucked. <laughs> you, you probably just love Scream 5 because Jack Quaid kicks ass in most of it. He does. No, but no, I, I really do like, um, well, you know, as we talked about. <laughs> all, I, I already told you all the things that I liked about it. But Jack Quaid definitely pads that uh, score up a whole lot. <laughs> hey, one other thing I do want to touch base on with the kills that I like in this movie. Mm-hmm. As I said, I like the punk boy getting his jugular stabbed. I love the way Amber gets torched at the end. I also really love the way Wes and his mom, what's her name? I cannot remember the sheriff lady. Fuck. Mom sheriff. Mom sheriff. She the, the way her and Wes uh their their kill also like it's not anything creative Mm -mm. but they're killed in broad daylight like in a suburb Mm -hmm. like just right in their house that whole sequence in terms of direction that's got some sweet cat and mouse stuff the whole sequence with wes and every time he opens a door shuts something it plays the like jump scare sound but he's not there and then he's just at the front door like he wasn't hiding he was just literally right outside yeah that whole segment is is really good yeah i thought that was a really cool sequence um so i i don't I do like the kills in general in this movie, though lacking in quantity. Quality is not. So. Yeah, yeah, and I, I, I'd, I'd argue that I, I'd prefer quality kills over just like you make a, a very, ton of them. Yeah, you make a very good point. Yes, and that that's kind of a trend with the franchise mm-hmm. in general too. I'm trying to think of my favorite scream kill. My favorite slasher kill of all time is um, from a Friday the Thirteenth movie. I don't remember exactly which one. But it's when Jason just bashes that fucking girl in the sleeping bag against that's, a tree. That's in Jason X, I think. <laughs> is yeah. it? No, he's in space. And- I know. At the very end of the movie, he is uh, back on Earth. I think he like falls out of space in like, a rocket. No, 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 no. What it is is... This is going to be confusing. But in Jason X, where they're at in space, they also have like these VR 
like training things that they they wear mm-hmm. and train for different shit and they somehow get Jason in one of them and he's like in virtual reality Crystal Lake mm-hmm. and <laughs> one of the girls is like hey what's up and he like stuffs her in the sleeping bag and beats her against the tree that's funny I'm almost positive that that's what it's from I think I'm almost positive I want to say it was from five. It may have happened more than once. I mean, there's I think, like 15 yeah, Friday the 13th. It definitely movies. could have. Because there's a sleeping bag kill in the 2010 movie. 2009 movie. In the reboot. Where he roasts her in the sleeping bag. Man, I'm going to have to watch that one. It's really good. Yeah. It really... I, I That is one that I have watched. It's really good. Brett is making fun of me because a couple years ago, me and Alyssa had a Halloween costume <laughs> yeah. party. And he had it on the TV. But you know, for a Halloween party, yeah. you got to have a horror movie playing. And I couldn't find the original for free. So I was like, well, you know, the reboot's on Netflix. Let her, mm-hmm. let her eat, you know? I didn't look at it not one time. I, I, you know, I was hosting my party. I do think the one that I'm talking about, the sleeping bag one, is either from four or five. Because, again, information courtesy of Dead Meat James. Love that guy. Um, he, he does a lot of behind the scenes uh, So That's what I love about the Kill Count so much mm-hmm. is the production uh, history that he gives. Because um, it was a lot longer of a kill, but the MPAA... Um, made them cut it down to just one hit so like the original they originally shot him like absolutely brutalizing this sleeping just turning bag over like the, stew inside yeah, this bag but they cut it down to just one so in the actual movie he just picks up one sleeping bag <laughs> slams it against a tree and then drops it and then walks away what like what if, <laughs> if we're getting in the weeds here but what if like he just beat her against the like a wall or the tree until there's no like inside the sleeping yeah, just bag like, it's like liquid it's That'd be it's sick. like the exterior is yeah. soaked and dripping with blood yeah. like ugh. well that's why i just i just love the idea because jason it's like is, this bag of meat now <laughs> jason's my favorite my second favorite slasher villain it's because he's just so like he's just a fucking mammoth of a dude he's just a unit, and so dude. Just, he Absolute just unit. like doesn't even need a machete literally just slams a bitch against a tree and she's fucking dead yeah. boom bitch went down <laughs> Yeah, bam, super bitch, super bitch, Sydney, super bitch. <laughs> um, shout out Tatum again. I brought it back. I brought it. I brought it back to scream. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, anyways, bringing it back to scream. I guess that's pretty much everything we need to touch base on. Uh, do you want to give your number review? I will. Brett? I will. I don't have one right now. Right, you don't? No. Oh, I did. Our first number rating. Of season two for our first review of season two. I'm giving Scream 2022. <laughs> Scream five. <laughs> Scream five. Scream five. We'll Scream just keep 2022. Uh, 8.5 out of 10. Ooh. Wow. Higher or lower than you thought? I got to give it a seven out of 10. Mm. I don't uh, know if I'd go that low. It's good. It's good. It's not my favorite. It's not the worst. Do you remember what I gave the first Scream? I don't. I can probably look up what I gave the first Scream. Yeah, I don't have that. I bet I gave it at least a 9 I got a new notebook. Hunter's had the same notebook uh, the whole time. I've gone through three. <laughs> Just because I, I switch notebooks too often. Because right now, because nowadays, with all the time that's passed, I consider the first Scream after having rewatched it multiple times after that day. Because that day that I watched it... I don't think it, I wrote down where we reviewed Scream. Oh. Well, that day that I watched Scream to review Bummer. it for the show was the first time that I'd seen it. So I want to say I gave it an eight then, an eight or a nine. But now after having rewatched it a few times, um, the original Scream is a 10 out of 10 movie for me. The original Scream, I, I didn't, man, I didn't write down. I'll go home and I'll check my notebook or I'll just watch the episode. Or we could just, yeah, listen to it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, the original Scream is, is very much close to the word flawless in my I, I, I i'd say it's, it's a 10 out of 10 movie it, it is something you can watch not just at halloween time at any yeah. time it really revamped the whodunit mm-hmm. you know um not just and it's not just a, thr- a, a thrasher a slasher <laughs> it's not just a thriller <laughs> yeah yeah i mean it could be um <laughs> it, it's it's a cool mystery movie mm-hmm. and it's funny too yeah and that's something i think this franchise has carried throughout um, four probably dulled down with the comedy a little bit, uh, going based off of what you're saying, and three was probably the most out there mm-hmm. as far as believability yeah. in certain aspects. And I think but five. I think, sorry, I'll let you finish. Uh, just real quick, I think five kind of reins things back in some uh, in the believability aspect. Uh, 
which may be a little bland, mm-hmm. but it's still there. You know, there's not too many big flaws. Like I said, the biggest flaw, some of the dialogue sucks. Uh, none of the kills are particularly unique or creative, although they are still impactful mm-hmm. and frightening. And I think that uh, one of the biggest flaws with this movie is also just what it what a scream movie does is mm-hmm. being extremely meta and being such a derivative of the rest of the franchise and specifically the first one in general. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of like nudging nostalgia, like, Hey, look at that. Yeah. You know? Um, I even noticed earlier whenever it first shows Sam mm-hmm. and, uh, her boyfriend, what, what's Jack Wade's kid? Richie. Yeah. Yeah. When it first shows Sam and Richie drive back into Woodsboro, mm-hmm. the first street they pass, the street signs Elm street. Yeah. And it's kind of like, uh. mm. but uh, that's kind of why I come to a seven out of 10, not a bad movie at mm-hmm. all. You know, I like it. Anyways, what you were saying. Oh, I was just going to say, as goofy as 3 is, um, which a lot of people hate it for, I, I think it's like goofy in a hilarious way. Yeah. Like, I, like I mentioned, that dude just fucking exploding <laughs> is the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. That might be one of the like cooler kills, more creative kills in the franchise. Yeah, but it's so Even stupid it too. No yeah, because yeah. he should have went up immediately after. Like, like that kind of stuff. I feel like it might have been intentional. Yeah. You know? Now, the voice changer, undefendable. I think that's fucking dumb. But... You know, some of the more goofy aspects of Scream 3, I think, were definitely, you know, that's what they wanted. Mm -hmm. Um, But, yeah. Overall, I do think that what you were saying with the the callbacks, it is is very derivative. And I will say, like I told you on Instagram, Scream 6 is definitely the most meta Scream we've had since Scream 3, right? But I think... It, you might be more okay with it in Scream 6 because, you know, in this one, it's like n- nostalgia bait, whereas in Scream 6, it's meta because it is integral to the plot. I got you. So, I, I think, you know, like, I, I think Scream 6 might just be, if Scream 5 was them, you know, learning the ropes of Scream, you know, Scream 6 is them putting yeah. it in full force. The they, characters they are their better. Craft in that the, one. the meta-ness is, is used better to, to fuller effect. I will say, though, um... Your problems with Sam as a lead uh, will not be satiated by six, I don't think, because I said all the characters get better. Sam pretty much stays the same, ah, but okay. I already liked her, so that's not a problem for me. But like but I said, she's might. not bad. Particularly, yeah, I just don't think. Which honestly, Nev Campbell was never great either. Mm-hmm. You know, she was never. Uh, we talked about <laughs> you made the joke that uh, she went to Keanu Reeves acting school. <laughs> yeah, which obviously isn't great, but uh, no. Uh, I have a question about six mm-hmm. without spoiling it. No spoilers. Honestly. But uh, is there is there some like big like whoa Absolutely. reveal? Oh, Dude, that's exciting. Maybe the most fucking whoa reveal of a killer ever. No shit. Yeah, that crazy. Huh? Super cool, man. I gotta go to the that's, movies. And see my you, my man. my biggest excitement is to be able to talk to you about the the final reveal. <sighs> Dude, I'm, I'm on afternoon shift the next two weeks, so <laughs> yeah, I don't know how I'm going to be. A, it's going to be a bit, but when you see it... Like, they're going to have to do matinees at, like, 10 a.m. in the morning for me to go I will see say, this. I will say, unfortunately, he's not a robot. <laughs> ah, that's a bummer. I know. Maybe next time. Maybe that Scream been 7. Wild. That would have been Maybe wild. Maybe Scream 7 will get Robo Ghostface. Um, yeah, so that's our review of uh, Scream 5, a.k.a. 2022. Yeah, that's so, Scream 5. Okay, 2022. Like always, you know, we we rambled and uh, blambled, and that's not a word, but we did it through this whole podcast. Season two and name only. It's the same fucking show. (laughs) (laughs) We will not change. We won't. Yeah. Yeah, whether whether you keep listening or not. That's what you're here for, isn't it? If you're listening to this, you know what you're getting into. We say say that every episode. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, we don't have to apologize for it. Um, So, uh, anyways, uh, Brett. I guess that concludes episode one of season two. That it does. It's a good time. You want to wrap us up with the shout outs? Yes. Oh, boy. I actually forgot that we did that. <laughs> um, but Do you still have them memorized? Oh, uh, yeah. I made Ooh. it really easy on myself. They're all the same thing. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> if you want to follow you us, it, yeah. if you want to follow us on Instagram or Twitter, uh, you can follow us there at Real Rendezvous, all one word. Uh, if you want to find us on YouTube, where every episode is uploaded with a cute little thumbnail and some cool... Uh, audio graphics you can find us at real rendezvous <laughs> on youtube uh go over there comment subscribe like our videos uh and all that fun jazz yeah do you think jazz is fun no 
You don't? I, don't, I never understood the term all that jazz. What does that mean? I don't know. Why, do, why, <laughs> why is jazz so all-encompassing? I don't know. I guess uh, tune in <laughs> tune next in, episode tune to find in next out. time to find out if we figured out why jazz is so all I have a feeling we won't have, have an answer. You have an idea of what we're going to be doing next time we get together? Uh, Got well, an episode cooking up in I, that nog? I thought you were going to pick it since you kind of like... Uh, what? I picked this one. Well, you said, do you want to do Scream 5 or do you want to do Scream 2? So I picked Scream 5. Yeah. Well, well I mean, eventually, I I eventually we will have taken a look at all of them. That That's the goal. Because uh, just so everybody knows, Scream 5 is probably the more important one to review. That's why I picked it, but I love Scream 2. Mm-hmm. I told Brett this. I think reviewing Scream 2, whenever we do get around to it, will be fun. Because I don't like Scream 2 that much. Man, I think you're fucking wild. I think Scream, I think Scream 1 is hands down the best. Mm-hmm. The original usually is. Mm-hmm. I think Scream 2 is the second best. <laughs> I think it's so good. Um, I like some of the new characters that are introduced in that one. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like uh, Randy. Shout out Randy. R.I.P. Randy. R.I.P. Randy. Um, but yeah, so uh, I don't know. I don't know what I'll pick. I kind of, uh, I was telling Brett, you know, I really want to watch, uh, the Evil Dead franchise, Mm -hmm. especially with the new Evil Dead on the horizon. Yes, which I will be seeing in theaters. Did you you watch the trailer for that? Yes. Okay. I'm very excited for that. Me and Kaylee are definitely seeing that. It is definitely going for the 2013 remake style even someone though. someone on the production team said that recently yeah it's, like in an interview they were like yeah we're definitely going for that uh you, you need to watch the the 2013 remake it is so I just, graphically I, is mm-hmm. it is brutal yeah. it is I, know, I know you told me this because i mentioned it before and i know you told me that my excuse me i know you told me my suspicions are wrong but i just don't know if I care for an Evil Dead that doesn't have Bruce Campbell in it, <laughs> uh, no, trust me, I, I really enjoy uh, the original trilogy. But at the same time, Bruce Campbell, like the first one, does take itself pretty seriously. Mm-hmm. There's still some cheesiness to it, but the cheesiness is in the fact that, like I said earlier, mm-hmm. he made it like with twenty dollars and a bunch of friends. But the the second one, Evil Dead Two, um, I think the subtitle is Dead by Dawn. It uh, it's almost like a requel. Yes. So the, immediately? <laughs> yes. Um, there's a lot of things that are rehashes of the first one, mm-hmm. just made with a higher production than the second mm-hmm. one. But there's new stuff injected into it. And this is where it really gets into that splat stick. Oh, uh, I got you. Uh, especially in the, like, the, the second and third act of mm-hmm. Evil Dead 2. And then Army of Darkness, I don't even know if I would consider it any kind of horror whatsoever. It's a, just straight up comedy. It is flat out. I mean, I think it's hilarious. Mm-hmm. I laugh out loud at, at Army of Darkness. All it's my favorite in the trilogy, mm. um, especially like the the whole third act of the movie is just awesome, mm-hmm. man. And so many of the Sam Raimiisms, like like after you watch the the original Evil Dead trilogy, you will look back at Multiverse of Madness and be like, "That's why Hunter liked uh, Multiverse uh, of Madness so much because mm-hmm. there's so many things that Sam Raimi does that's just signature to him." So, uh, but with all that said, I don't think I'm going to pick an Evil Dead movie for an extra review. <laughs> yeah. So disregard all that shit we just said. Uh, because we'll get it doesn't it. matter. Yeah, we'll get around to oh, it. Oh, well, there's there's so much stuff that you know. However long we keep doing this, you know, one year down, many to go. Hopefully, we'll yeah. we'll get around to all of it. No doubt. No doubt. Well, I guess we'll get out of here. All right. Later, guys. Bye, guys. Love you.